Hello, I have a treat today. I have Joe and I have Gemma that write together as a team. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So over to you two, whoever wants to go first. Go on, Joe, over to you. Oh, right, me first, usually the ladies. But, um, so I'm Joe Corley. I'm a co-author with Gemma. I also write memoirs and I'm a travel writer as well. I write for the Telegraph mainly, but other national newspapers as well. And um, we've just released our latest thriller. Um, I'll let you, Gemma, tell you about that. Yeah. Um, so I'm Gemma Metcalf. Um, I've written, this is my fourth book um, that I've written. They're all psychological or suspense thrillers. Um, I've written two by myself and two with Joe. Um, the latest one that we've written is called Eyes of Glass. And it's... I think it's probably the one that we're most proud of, would you say, Joe? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we, we took a very long time in it, faffing with it, but... Yeah. Uh, with it. yeah. Tell them about the premise, the blurb. The blurb? I'll let you tell them about the blurb. Tell them about the... Right, so basically um, it's about um, an Irish um, lady called Lyra and she has just um, caught a husband in bed with another woman and she goes down to the beach in Ireland where she always goes to think. She finds a bottle um, which has been washed up and she um, she looks inside and there's a, there's a note. So it's based on the whole message in a bottle theme, um, but it's not a romance. It's not a fairy tale the woman has written um some very dark words inside the bottle and there's a phone number and when Lyra phones the number she gets put in touch with a family in Chapkidic um <clears throat> which is um near Martha's Vineyard in America. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So um and the, the girl answers and, and Lyra says to her I've basically I, I found this note off um your mum D Warren and the girl bursts into tears and says, "Oh, my mum! Um, my mum! Can't say that word. My mum took her own life, um, six months ago. And when Lyra looks at it, basically the the lady took her own life just very, very soon after setting the bottle a sale. Lyra builds up a, a relationship with the daughter with Chloe because Lyra's also lost her own mother, um, and she gets invited over to." the the family's big island mansion in Chapakidic. But when she gets there, obviously things aren't all as they seem. They're not the Brady Bunch and there's lots of twists and turns. Um, and Lyra starts to wonder, is, you know, suicide really what happened kind of thing? But obviously there's tons of twists and turns in it. If I if I'd have done that, I'd have you know me, I'd have given I'd given it all away by then. Yeah, I would have told you the whole thing, so you wouldn't have needed to buy right. it. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> Complete spoiler. Go all the time when Joe's writing a chapter. I'm like, we need to take that bit out because you've just told them that, and you can't tell them that. Yeah, I'm a very giving kind of. <laughs> in the wrong place. Who's the boss in this partnership? Then I see. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even need that. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> there's no denying that. <laughs> so, Jimmy, you said you wrote two books alone, first of all. So, then why did you decide to partner up for your third one? With Joe, because he begged me. Begged. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just reverse that a little bit. No, um, me and Joe have been friends like for since pretty much since I wrote the first one, which was back in 2000. And, 17 I think um and I was living in Tenerife at the time where Joe was and I'd read Joe's memoir series um which is the more catch up than salsa it's very like funny memoir series about him moving to Tenerife years ago and trying to run this bar um and obviously I was looking for a, another author on the island so I got in touch with Joe and said oh I've written a book and we met up and we pretty much decided like to, we, we kind of decided there and then oh we should write something together it'd be fun but obviously it took like quite some time to get round to it um, because I ended up having a child in the middle of all this. <laughs> um, so, and we had a couple of false starts because I'm a bit of a, a pantser. So I'll just be like, oh, well, we'll just write this, Joe. Right, you write your bit. And then he's more of a planner. He's like, oh. 
Um, but yeah, we finally got round to it, didn't we? And we wrote our last mm. one, which was um, Our Little Lies, and that came out last year, and that did really well. And then, yeah, we've been writing this one. But it, it do take far too long, because we do a lot of faffing. Um, we drink a lot of wine, and we eat a lot of pizza. And all that gets in the way, as well as, well as Jude. Yeah, yeah, that's my son. Um, but yeah, we... It, it is fun though but yeah you'd think like because there's two of us it should take half the time it takes double the time yes. <laughs> all the gas in and arguments yeah i know authors it's fine yeah I, i'd imagine double is about right because procrastination is everything <laughs> yeah yeah procrastination is a huge part of it very important and Joe, how did it go from um writing memoirs to writing psychological thrillers because that's quite a change in genre it was. I've, I mean, I'd, I, I'd written these, I've written four uh, non-fiction books by then, five non-fiction books by then. And I wanted, I felt a bit trapped by the whole um, non-fiction memoir, especially because you've got to kind of stick to the truth. And I was, my mind was forever thinking, what if this happened or what if that happened? So I was looking for some kind of fictional outlet and um, Gemma came along. It wasn't necessarily what I was going to do because I've got some comedy books half written as well um but no I just got on really well with Gemma and we had some good ideas between us um but it was it was it, it was it took a, a good deal of learning and bullying from Gemma to make sure that I didn't spill the beans too early um which is always my case but no it was, it was good fun and I think what worked is we've both got um different strengths and weaknesses as well um, so we actually worked as a duo, as a writing duo, really well. We found that, you know, my strengths complemented Gemma's strengths. Um, like I'm, I'm better at characters, dialogue, uh, and description, but Gemma is a plot, plot meister and a, a twister. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a good pairing, really. It doesn't, I don't think it works for everybody. I think it's a difficult, um, balance to find, but in our case, it's worked well and we've, we still remained friends, mostly. Yeah, most authors I ask, um, the, their idea of writing with someone is a nightmare because everyone's got such a unique style. So um, it sounds like you two have really hit it off, which is cool. And was the second book easier once you'd finally found the rhythm? Was it se the second one easier to do? We did it completely differently in a way because <laughs> the first book that we wrote was very, it was almost, we, we wrote it, I asked Joe to come along and be involved in that book because it was a, a very male female um narration. It was <laughs> the narrative between male female and the the woman told a story and the male told the story. So that was almost easier to do that. When we went on to the second book, the idea that we actually came up with, it wasn't really going to be that easy female male narration and we didn't want to like um like make it be that when it shouldn't have been that so that one was was difficult because we actually then like the main character in this book which is Lyra me and Joe have both written Lyra so we needed to make sure we were both writing in exactly the same style and that you couldn't tell who was writing what um, and then obviously the minor cut, the other minor characters that come through. Yeah, we we kind of you did more, you did a few, didn't you? And I, but yeah, we kind of switched about, didn't we? And yeah, that we did. was different. That was different mm. again because I think in order to do that, you've got to have a, a huge um, idea of how your character is describing things, how your character comes across. You know, um, yes, yeah, so I think I would say it was more difficult the second one. I think it was, um, like you said, it was a very different style and we had to work on getting the voices right. Like you said, so there's no seams um, who was writing what. But um, yeah, we found a way and I think it did take longer, I think for that reason really, that it wasn't like, right, his voice, her voice, his voice, her voice. Um, but no, it, it worked out well. In some ways, I think it was more interesting because we both got involved in all the characters. Yeah, yeah, and it was good. But I think um, even within that though, I think even when you wrote a Lyra chapter, I would be editing that Lyra chapter and vice versa. Mm. So our voices kind of came together quite well 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully there's no seams in it, but we'll find out. <clears throat> yeah, and let us know. <laughs> yeah. Well, mine are the good bits, obviously, and um, that's how it works. <laughs> that was like one chapter that's a good bit then, because I wrote most of it. <laughs> in your mind. Mm. I'm not getting in the middle of that. <laughs> <laughs> How about ideas? How does it work? Um, what story ideas you go with and stuff? Do you both have loads of ideas and you bring them together, or do you have one if you have an idea and go, oh, I'd love to write this, and then you go with that? It just works with me having some ideas and Gemma dismissing them completely, and then Gemma coming up with an idea, and we have to agree on that one. Isn't that how it Gemma? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Oh, I think the first one was my the first one we did together was my idea, and um, because I was originally going to write that one myself, um, and then like say I got I got into it and I thought oh this this is male female there definitely, and then I asked so I asked Joe to come on board with that so that obviously was my idea anyway. The second one I think actually Joe it was initiated from something you'd read in the paper, and you said isn't this a really interesting concept? And it was about somebody who found a <laughs> And they phoned the person. Yeah. Nothing crazy had happened from that, I don't think, had it? But from that, then we started like, oh, well, what if this happened? What if this happened? Yeah, it triggered other things. So the initial idea, um, yeah, and then I've got we've just been talking then just before this about um where we're gonna go next. And but I've got this really good idea. So I'm like, no, we can't do that because I need this idea. So I think. Yeah, I get quite strong views on what I want to write. And then it's just about sort of... Manipulating me into it. Manipulating you to do it. <laughs> yeah. um, what about how you um, form your characters? Because um, obviously with different backgrounds and stuff, we have different ideas and that. So how do you form your characters? I'll let Joe answer that one because he's... <laughs> Um, we do sort of go through a bit of a process of we build each character individually and obviously it has to tie in and, and provide material for another character. Um, we obviously, we want to make them real, um, we want to make, make them have flaws, the usual things really, but it's a question of just making them believable, which is through the dialogue as well. And they all need to have a different way of speaking. They all need to um, be from different backgrounds and have some kind of inner problems that that just make their character a bit deeper. Um, we, I love doing that part of the whole process. I think building the characters is probably my favorite part really. Um, and I think we've got some really good characters in this, this um, Eyes of Glass, really good. Yeah, we have, yeah. Like, they're very, very real even to me, these characters. And obviously, I, you know, we we kind of are creating them but to me even I can think about them as real very real people and I think if you can do that that's you know you've kind of got a good you've got a good character there yeah you said afterwards that you you missed um Lyra when you're not being when we had a break from writing you just said oh, I've missed her yeah. You, you great oh, embodying, yeah embodying Lyra and I think that's yeah you it makes writing easier as well if you uh, you sort of know that character really well because you can sit down and start writing from the perspective of that character. Um, yeah, and there's, we've got some serious issues, haven't we? Our characters, which I like, obviously. Mm. Yeah, they're not all likable characters for sure, but they've they're interesting and they're deep, and I think you 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 do find it reasonably easy to connect with them. And they're not stereotypical. Um, but yeah, Joe's really good with that. Like I'm a little bit, because I have these um, like ideas, I'm like, oh, I really want to write this, really want to write this. I'll be like, tch, 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 tch. and then like I'll realise after a bit, oh, this character's just me. Like, because I haven't really thought that. Whereas one thing that Joe really does help with is he won't let me. He'll make sure that we know everything about the character. We know the strengths, we know the flaws, we know, you know, he, he has a system that we have to go through and you, ca you even cast them, don't you? And look I'm head of casting, yes. And, you know, if it went to film and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we, fi we find actors that and actresses that we think would 
portray them particularly well. Um, and then we, we have a rough idea in our minds. We, we both know the kind of look of these people, even though it's not necessarily those actors and actresses and how they will behave. It's just easier. Yeah, I've, I've heard a few people do that, which is quite cool, actually. Mm. I have a weird thing where I can't see images in my head. I don't have mental images. So when I'm reading and if I when I write, I don't have that. So I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I suppose when it's the two of us, we both need to have the same idea. So it's it's just, it's something we have to do, really. Otherwise, you know. Do though, Donna, so you're reading and you're not visualising anything. And yet you're such an avid reader. You'd think like it would be a hindrance that to enjoying a book. But... Yeah, no, not at all. Funny enough, yeah, no. I guess, yeah, I don't know. I guess it means that the books I enjoy more are perhaps the more descriptive ones or the ones that really go deep into psychology, I don't know. Mm. But I'm not really a big fantasy reader either, so, yeah. I guess, yeah, to read fantasy, you would be relying on a lot of that visual, wouldn't you, I think? Yeah, yeah it doesn't really. I need something real, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about characters, a question I really, it's a really fun one to ask. Is, did you give any of your characters any kind of um, quirk or personality trait or anything at the beginning of the book that you regretted by the end? I can't think of any. I don't, can you, Gemma? Because I think we went over it so many times <clears throat> with the revisions and edits that um, I think we'd have probably got rid of it by then. Um, no, I don't think there is. Did you have a quirk? I mean... They all had sort of little quirks in in the ways of Lyra, obviously, was a bit socially awkward, kept putting a foot in it all the time and things. Um, Bill's lips used to go bone white when he was fuming. That's which he took off Joe, because that's what happens with Joe, he gets white lips. <laughs> Often when I'm working with <laughs> him. <laughs> no. no, I don't think we did, no. I think we kept we kept more than yeah I think we did yeah we were happy with the quirks the the reason I ask actually is um because <clears throat> uh, Ellie Griffiths um gave her, her character I think it's Ruth isn't it it's, um in the beginning of her series said that she never wore jeans and she's like why did I do this why did she never wear jeans so as she's gone on she's written that She's start, found a style of jeans that she likes, but I just thought it was really funny. <laughs> That's yeah. a weird one to put in. <clears throat> um, how are you published? Are you traditionally published or are you self-published? Um, as a duo, we're uh, traditionally published. Um, you're only traditionally published, Gemma. I'm a, a, a mixture, a hybrid of both. Um, both have got advantages, disadvantages, but... Yeah, so we're with um, Spellbound, which is one of the the sort of new up and coming um with some yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, we we really love being part of that actually, and we love them too. They're great, and I think that's half the battle if you get on with your publishers. Um, so that yeah, we're really enjoying that. Um, we've been published by Bloodhound as well, and I've been published by HQ HQ, which was the Infinite Path Collins. And um, yeah, and Joe's done Simon and Schuster, mm, but that was ghostwriting. And you've done obviously your own books were self published, weren't they? And they've done really well, well. Originally published through Summersdale and then self published, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we worked with a few. Yeah, blimey. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of all of them. I know of authors with each and stuff. So, but yeah, so it was spelled by now, you say. <laughs> yeah. Bad. Brilliant. Yeah, I've had, I've done, they produce loads, don't they, as well, so. Yeah, it's our first book with them, but they, they are, they're great to work with. They're, they're very easygoing and they're very author-centric um, and they kind of let you get on with it and like you coming up with the ideas. Um, and like, they, they, we found with some publishers that they try and pigeonhole you into some commercial box, um, which doesn't really work for our kind of writing as a duo, I don't think, and probably not for a lot of authors. Um, but with um, Nikki and Samara at, at Spellbound, they're not really bothered about that. They, they like putting out something that's a bit outside the box. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons we're happy with. 
um, the epilogue in Eyes of Glass, just to give an example, we sent that to a few publishers first. Um, we got really good feedback on on the um the actual book, and there was one big one that wanted to take us on, but was like, mm, you know, we we want this changing and this changing, and more than anything, this epilogue. Um, and then I we sent it spellbound, sent it to Smira, and I sent it without the epilogue, and they, they said, yeah, we want you and everything. And then I said, what about this epilogue, by the way? Sent it to Smira. Smear come back like, oh my god, are you me? Of course you've got that epilogue in there, and that to me was like, yeah, we've got the right because she got it, and it was a bit controversial, but she was like, yeah, of course you've got to like, you've got to push boundaries a little bit, aren't you in in fiction? And yeah, so mm. yeah, I think that's what these <clears throat> smaller presses are doing as well. People like to bow down allowing authors um, a little bit more freedom to go outside the box. And I've just read Mark Eklid's um, Blood on Shakespeare's typewriter, which oh, is yeah. wonderful, but it's brilliant. <laughs> and I don't think a traditional publisher would, would touch it, probably, but it's great. <clears throat> but you, said, you said yourself, Jamie, you were getting a little bit bored of thrillers at one stage because they did seem to be following the same kind of film. Yeah, I did. I got really fed up because it was just all as, exactly the same thing. Um, but that, I suppose, is what sells a lot. So, yeah. Yeah, well, people say that, but then that's based on the traditional published books' figures. So, you know, they're using their own figures to prove that that's what's selling and they're not taking any self published, is my opinion, anyway. But, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> you know, I mean, I read a hell of a lot. And I would argue that there's so many more self published books that are better than some of the traditionally published but there we are yeah yeah it's it's great when um, the indies the smaller indies can do that and expand and be known for it as well I and mean, i think um spellbound are known for pushing boundaries as as are a few others but yeah uh, yeah but to get that name for it for it people then will that want something a bit different will go there the readers yeah. right? it's a shame that they're not recognized by the industry more isn't it yeah that is a shame but uh, things I mean, things have changed a lot, but um, I think it's, they're still changing slightly now, and um, hopefully in the future it won't be as much of a gap in 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 how people view these indies, for one thing. But, yeah, I think it's starting to close, isn't it? And I think um, with Asim Khan as head of the CWA at the moment, I think that's a really big move to perhaps closing the gap a little bit, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see. Yeah. Um, when you're editing, um, are there certain words or phrases that um, both of you overuse? That won't use. That we all use. Um, you told me off at one point because all my characters were all, always had tears in their eyes. You do use it, you know, to... <laughs> so he won't let me do that anymore. <laughs> I um, tend to do the copy edit on it, and uh, yes, the number of um, tears that I've had to wipe away from Gemma's <laughs> quite a lot. yeah everybody it, it, I think in this book every single character was crying at one stage well it was a very sad emotional book <laughs> they, were going through a lot. they were going through a lot and they had to do it all dry eyed apparently <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think do you use something that I cut a lot I don't know that would require Joe having to sort of write stuff in the first place you know. <laughs> it's overused, there has to be, you know, substance. You um, <laughs> I didn't write this book. This is nothing to do with me. Um, yeah. now I can't. For me, I can't think of any um that I've overused. I'm sure I do, but that, I think that'd be for other people to pick out because you get a bit blind to it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I can't. Can't think of anything that you overuse, to be honest. No. Yeah. Usually it's just every author I'm like, they like just all the time. I have to edit it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we do, I suppose, with um, the spell checkers and everything now and the, the, the grammarlies and all that kind of thing, it can find that thing for you. Um, we should run it and then on the script, actually, because I don't think we did it on this one, just find out what terms and phrases we use the most. Or yeah. too much. 
apart from tears. Yeah. I always, if, if, I, if I'm reading a book and I come across a very clever way to describe an emotion, like being scared or upset or something like that, then because there is only so many ways isn't there you see and if i come up with a clever way if i see i'm like oh yeah mental note of that because that's that's like it is it's so hard um to, to think of different ways to convey certain emotions that uh, especially is. with the whole show don't tell as well and mm. you know yeah <laughs> i mean i think a bugbear for me is padding Everyone pads across rooms. Oh, it? padding, and yeah. So I, you know, I know there's only so many say ways you can say they walked, but now everyone's padding and it drives me up in the school. Yeah. It's that classic one, isn't there? I think it's John Mars who, who mm -hmm. jokes about it. The breath, uh, let go of the breath they didn't realise they were holding. Yeah. I, I think yeah. you know, at some point uh, I've used that phrase. Yeah, Freedom McFadden actually is a big one for that. So now she puts it in her books on purpose. As a bit of an Easter egg, because she really, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've recently just got into Freedom at and then I'm, I'm hooked. It's like, yeah, I started reading, and she fooled me with the, the um, the hand, the the housemaid. She fooled me, and then she fooled me again with the second one. I was like, how has she managed to do that twice? Because I don't normally get fooled, so to get fooled twice, yeah, I was like. Yeah, she's uh she's a full time doctor as well. Like Yeah, I know, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I know some people. Um oh. I was really lucky to interview her. I think I was one of the first people to interview her face to face, like on Zoom. And her interview has been viewed thousands of times. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's very good, isn't she? Um <laughs> It sounds like, Jenny, you're more about the twists and stuff. So how do you find trying to balance the story while keeping the twists and stuff? Because Joe has to tell you off all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think I always kind of know when I start. I think part of my <gasps> is that I already know the twist. I think that's part of me. Oh, my God, I've got a brilliant idea because I already know the twist. Because it's like you think it's this but it's this and that's how I pitch it to Joe so we start from that point and then obviously from that then we need to we need to weave um to actually get to that point and hide things and do all that I think it would be safe to say I do I think because you need to be able to be underhand in one thing whilst showing a different thing that probably is what comes more natural to me to, to do you are more yeah. like underhand, yeah. Yeah, whereas what Joe would do is um make sure that I, I suppose within that that we've still got the really strong character dynamics coming through, that we've still got with a really good description, all that kind of stuff, I guess, if that's answering the question. Yeah, but I would say the plot throughout is pretty much me, isn't it? I would plot it mainly. Yeah, that is your your big strength, isn't it? The plotting. I mean, I'll add scenes and I've seen ideas, um, but I think it's we, we bounce ideas um, and sometimes obviously they don't work. But I think it's important that you got one person that's the architect. I think otherwise it's going to be um, it's going to take a lot longer. And I think that's again it's why we work well together because we do know and admit and are honest with each other's strengths and um weaknesses and and i'm i just can't i'm not good i can't keep threads in my head um whereas Gemma has a grasp of it all and she can weave away um but no i think it does work well that way yeah and you do you do uh do the the plot inside and very well too although there is one of the my favorite scenes is from something that Joe came up with and wrote in Eyes of Glass and it is brilliant but this is the thing with Joe it'll come up with like an amazing like oh my god this is an amazing scene it's going to be so visual it's going to be so creepy it's going to be really this this and this but then obviously that's all he'll have and he, he won't be able to like do a story around that but then I obviously within me plotting Joe will go 
oh and we'll put that in there and we'll put that in there and then those things are really powerful like you call them like poster scenes don't you yeah 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 i i, I drop them in and we we kind of agree where we're going to put them but yeah we'll come up with random scenes i think would work really well for that character yeah. uh, and just show off the, the the real extremes of the character yeah, so I mean you, that is a little bit of plotting as well, but I think to actually weave it in and out of the story, yeah, that would be more me, I guess. Definitely. <laughs> so you come to start another book. How does the process work between the two of you from the very first minute that you start the next one? <laughs> Funny actually, because we've just started it before talking to you. The process, mm. which is basically just sat having a chat about exactly what we think what we want to do isn't it as well so, um i've we already, know. already got one of these ideas that i'm pushing um you know we want to do a series yeah. next time. we decided we want to do something that we can continue um so again it's going to be very important that the characters mm -hmm. are, are so deep um so yeah first of all it's, it's the premise what is the premise going to be and then we'll just back and forth on these characters um, and you you probably do quite a lot of it because i quite like him giving me a character it's like he gives me staff to work with so i like to get given a person and like all about them and read all about them almost as if they were because then they're a character coming to me you see sometimes when i'm trying to create it myself they don't feel as real as when i get given it and it works We'll, we'll do similar kind of thing with settings, won't we? As well, we'll um, investigate settings that we think would be fitting in well and work well with that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll come up with images of the places, uh, for houses, we'll go on like real estate sites and uh, pick out exactly the house that we want to use. Again, so we've both got the kind of right idea and right look of, of, of if the character's moving through, we both know which rooms they're going to go into. Yeah, and any sort of research that we need to do. Um, and then a lot of it, I think, is then sort of we might I might say right. Well, let's try and write this this maybe a couple of scenes then, and then we'll go from there. And then it might be a case of I do a lot of thinking in the middle of the night, which is really inconvenient. But like I'll wait, <laughs> I'll wake up, and that's when my brain just goes for about an hour, and I'll I'll just think of things. So then the next day I'll be like, oh, and this can happen, and this can happen, and. So just be going through there. We we certainly don't have it all planned out before we start writing. No, but it's yeah. it's more planned out than you're probably used to, isn't it? Yeah, because obviously you've got to write some of it, so I can't just go off because Joe needs to also know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I wind Joe up a lot. You'll uh, you'll gather. <laughs> yes, hence the hair color. <laughs> Seems to pretty much just go over his head though, so yeah, <laughs> it does. <laughs> I like go over my head. And how important is setting to you? Um, obviously, in different places. So, how do you decide where to set your book? That is important. Yeah, we we and we obviously we have to agree on it again. But the setting is in a way sets the tone. Um, so we've got to like for this latest one, we we wanted it to cross the Atlantic. Um, and so I won't give, I probably will give too much away. I'll try not to give too much away, but oh. uh, just stop there. No, go on, I trust you. Do that if I'm getting too close. So, um, yeah, the, the, the first scene is, is, is very, um, it says something about the whole message and tone of the book, the actual setting of the first scene, um, which is, I thought was quite a nice insert. Um, and then we want the contrast between life in Ireland for Lyra. I'm just checking myself as I go, go on here. Um, and where she ends up, um, ultimately. So, yeah, scenes are very important. I'm, I'm going to stop because I know it's going to go. <laughs> I'll end it there. Do you have a certain um, place that you like reading about the most, Donna? Do you have like, do you like reading about like places in Scotland or America or? I mean, I think I have the same as most people as if I see where I live mentioned, but it's so rare because yeah. I live sort of, well, I live just north of London and obviously London's quite popular, but very rarely I, I live in Bedfordshire 
and it's just never mentioned. So someone's writing about London and they travel up the M1 and they go to Luton or Dunstable where I live, I'm like, oh. But apart yeah. from that, I love I love um Scotland. Um but um I funnily enough I'm reading a book about that's set in Scotland at the minute and it the language is so hard because it's so Scotty. It's follow, yeah. so yeah, I'm just like mm. yeah. So yeah, it's a balance. Mm. I love learning something when I read. So if um I love books set in America because usually I learn something I didn't know before, sometimes I learned as well. So that's quite nice. Yeah. 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 This, I mean, this island is, uh, I think a lot of people do know it, or more people know it because of the uh, the accident with the Kennedys. Um, yeah. but, no, but I think that's what it's better known for. But um, I've been to the region, but never this island. So there was a lot of Google Earth involved in this. But I wanted to write something from that New England place. I used to live there, and yeah, I think it's a very scenic uh, and pretty place with a lot of variety as well. Yeah, That's I've read them. Um, obviously, Chris Whitaker wrote wrote in America and and stuff. And yeah, it's cool. And there's so much America I'd love to visit. I've only been Florida, so if you can do it vicariously for a book, maybe. Hey. Um, are there any no go areas for either of you that you won't write about? I would really struggle to write anything to do with um like child abuse, child like I think just because you you put so much into when you write and I think that's like a major trigger in terms of because I'm a mom to a five year old and I think that would just be too much for me and I have quite a lot of anxiety as it is. So like putting that yeah, I, I I don't think I'd like to properly go there. I, I mean, I could touch upon it, but I mean, you know, like a full book that focused on that. I don't think I could I could write anything like that. I think I'm open to anything. Can't think of anything that would, no, I wouldn't get involved with. He was a borderline psychopath, so <laughs> <laughs> nothing phases that guy. <laughs> Medication. <laughs> See, I find it, I don't find child abuse particularly triggering, and I think it's because I'm not a parent, so it doesn't really, you know, I guess because I can't picture my own child in that position, and it doesn't really bother me. Yeah. Is this something that you wouldn't touch then? Only animal stuff, but actually even saying that, I have read stuff with um, stuff happening to animals, and I know, I think in my head now I know it's fiction, so it's fine, <laughs> but I yeah. don't like it. Yeah. 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 But otherwise, anything goes. I'm, quite... <laughs> I'm not sure if that makes me a psycho either. Really. Um, I remember reading an Amanda Prowse book, and the Amanda is it Poppy Day or something like that? That she read. Anyway, there's well, there's there was the one that came after it, and the she was a mom and she got cancer, and it was like it was all to do with that, and that sent me anxiety soaring as well. I think it's anything that's like mother child. Anything like that, I don't think I'd like to go there in my own mind. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. But like crazy serial killers, like, you know, ripping people's insides down, gouging their eyes, like, yeah, I'm all for that. So, <laughs> I mean, I literally wrote a book to kill someone that fired me unfairly seven years ago. And I wanted to, I can't do anything for my real life. So I thought I'd do it in fiction. I loved it. It was great. Book. He suffers. Great deal of satisfaction out of it. <laughs> oh, yes. I was quite surprised actually when I was writing. I was like, oh, I could do that. <laughs> yes. well, didn't name his, name. his first name is the same, his second name is different. Right. They wouldn't know. I know. Yeah. But actually, that's... I don't know what he said, but we don't really. But the chances of him finding out are slim, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Although my police advisor friend says he hopes he reads it and hopes he gets sober and shoulder for the rest of his life. So, okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Um, what do you both do about research? Avoid it. <laughs> oh, you do, yeah. I have to do it. Um, 
Yeah, I think, like I said, with um, this, with Isaac there was a lot of Google Earth because um, there's was, there was certain journeys that people had to make and I wanted to 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 do the journey myself. So I'd try and follow the, the path so I can describe the scenery and um, what the road's like and how long it would take and that kind of thing. Um, so Google Earth is very handy. Um, I don't think there was necessarily a lot of, apart from geographically and description wise, there was not a lot of um, research needed for this book or for the previous one, uh, possibly more so for the next. Right in next, I think we're going to need quite a bit of research for that. So I think it's like, well, I, funny you should mention that because I've just asked Joe, I've just suggested to Joe that he pays for me to do um, a diploma in um criminal psychology and i said you pay for it and i'll do it because i'm a bit of a nerd really i like doing learning and i've always wanted to do criminal psychology oh, i actually want to do a criminal psychology degree but that'd be too much so i thought joe could pay for this diploma for me um for 400 pound but he doesn't seem to want to do that <laughs> i'll do it myself uh but yeah we'll do some reading um online stuff yeah. yeah that kind of try we'll probably try and find an expert as well won't we and um try and dig into him a bit or her yeah um chris merritt is a great guy and he's a real life um can't think of what his official part of this but he does that sort of stuff so and he's awesome and a really nice man as well so that's who we met at harrogate isn't it john that was graham bartlett is that what you're saying are you saying someone else chris merritt oh. Yeah, yeah, Graham Graham Bart Bartlett. The police advisor, yeah, he's lovely. Yeah, yeah. What's Chris's specialty? I think he's a I don't know, if he's a clinical psychologist or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's he's Dr. Chris Merritt, so he's a doctor in some kind of psychology. Yeah. Okay. I know. But he, he advises authors as well, does he? He's advised be... Graham. Um, because Graham wanted to know the effect that the cases would have on the police, even though he was in the police for years. But he wanted to know the, the effect of the case that he had in his first book would have on his characters for the second book. So he went to Chris Merritt. And yeah. Asked. So yeah, oh. he's a good guy to know. And he's really lovely. Yeah. Oh, good. That's yeah. good. We need to um, get the details. And next time you're drunk at a festival, Gemma, we'll have to approach him. Yeah, he didn't. He was at Harrogate on the Thursday, I think, this year. But he, um, he's got a new baby, so he couldn't hang around. So I didn't see him. Um, but yeah, I've interviewed him. So. Yeah, awesome. I will get in touch. Yeah, he's a good guy to know. Um, I know everyone. So I'll tell you if he's doing to speak to. Yeah, there's some nurse as well, actually, that Graham's been with, but off the top of my head, I can't think. Um, so. Um, you're only just in the um, planning stage of the new book. Um, yeah, so yeah. How is it going to take you, do you think, from like planning to actually getting it finished? <laughs> well, it should take us to write it. It should take us about six months. It's not going to, is it? It never no. does. No. It's good in a way that you're over there and I'm over here now because when you were here and we worked together in my writing shed, yes. we faffed, we actually had a tip jar. If, so the first person to speak had to put a tip in. Um, paid for many a bottle of wine, didn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we we weren't being that productive, but now we're, we're part, we can actually get on with writing because we just hit the stop button on the re Skype or Zoom. And I have obviously other jobs, like I work in a school as well. And Joe, obviously, even though he's a full time writer, he's not like a full time author. So he is sort of nine to five is still very much like ghost writing, isn't it? And content. Yeah, copywriting. Yeah. Yeah. So, writing. yeah. But then obviously, Freedom McFadden as a She's a, a doctor and she's managing to knock out like three a year or whatever. There's no excuses, there really. <laughs> we say that every time, every every book. Um, there's no excuses. We need to get it out in six months. Let's just do it. And then we don't do it. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> um, what has been your biggest pinch me moment so far since you started writing? Biggest what moment, sorry? Pinch me. Still pinch me. 
pinch me <laughs> by it's your accent. Ooh. Must be when you met me, I would have thought. Well, you can't get better than that, can you? <laughs> um, aside from that, um, I think, well, I've had two quotes off Angela Marsden's now, and she quoted my second book, Mother's Sacrifice. When she did that, I was like, oh, my God, like, amazing. Um, And to be fair, Mark Edwards, when he, he wrote, he gave me a quote on my first book, that was, because I was a big fan of Mark anyway, um, so to get that was that was a big pinch me moment, and now I just get drunk and like traumatized the poor guy at, at Harrogate. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have to apologize to Mark every time, Zian. Every time I've kept back from Harrogate, I have to apologize to Mark, yeah. And every time he just goes, You were fine, you were on top form, and then that's <laughs> it. <Until> the next... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess, I guess it must be that. Oh, and B.A. Paris as well. She quoted my first book. I think that that when I first started and I'm getting these, like, that I have admired and, like, they're quoting my books. I don't think you can get better than that. And even now, obviously, like, Angela Marsden's has just given me a quote on um, Eyes of Glass and even four books down the line when that comes through and she's like, oh, I read it in one sitting. Absolutely couldn't put it down. And that, to me, is worth so, like, that's just, like, <laughs> yeah because I think you do like you get you probably do get a bit of the imposter syndrome anyway like as an author and then so you just think like wow these like these proper authors are like yeah yeah I think for me it was the Angela Marsons moment when we got that quote I think that was that was like a pinch me um time I think when I got an award for my first book uh, it was voted best travel narrative by the British Guild of Travel Writers, and I should have been there to collect an award. And um, that was the one year I didn't go. Nobody gave me a heads up. But even so, it was still nice to have uh, got that. Yeah. And what are your goals? Is there any anything in particular you both want to achieve? Yeah. Go on, Jam. Number one, obviously, on Amazon. Um. We will get there eventually. I I I get everything that I want eventually. So <laughs> <laughs> look at Joe's eyes. <laughs> oh, have I ever not got anything that I have set out to get? I, I fight and fight and fight. <laughs> no, so eventually, yeah, I think number one, but I know that that's a long time off, but that is that is the ultimate aim, yeah. Even if it's only for 10 minutes and then Angela Marston's reveals a cover and then I'm off but you know <laughs> 10 minutes <laughs> hey, um, and getting something on TV that's that's a big that's last thing on my well, one of the last things on my bucket list uh, we want some of our material to actually be on TV in some form well it's not a better time I'd say especially with Netflix and everything so yeah there's yeah there's been so many uh, there's so many streaming services now it's like you said it's never been a better time yeah, well, I should keep my fingers crossed for you both for that. Um, and I don't think I have any more questions unless there's anything really obvious that I haven't asked you that you wanted to tell us about. Uh, no, I don't think so. I want to ask you a question, if that's all right. I want to know, because obviously you're the, the queen of readers, What? who's your favourite author? Have you got a favourite author? <laughs> um, I mean, there's quite a few that I'd automatically read. I mean, I've just read Tony Forder's new book, and that was incredible. He's one of my favourites. Um, he's written a series um, featuring a character called Blitz. Um, so he would be probably the one that, I, that comes to mind automatically. But, I mean, I love Will Green. He writes some incredible books. Um, the Last Passenger, his last one blew me away completely. Okay. Um, that was... And it's the one that's impossible to review. Literally can't review it because you give away everything. <laughs> you oh, can yeah. review up to like a quarter and then the rest of it, you're like, no. <laughs> Sold that to me already on that line. So, yeah. It's been, it, I mean, it's, it's been a bit of a Marmite book, which is weird. Some people say it's too out there, but I didn't think so. I thought it was amazing. Right. Okay. Good. <laughs> oh, but thanks very much. I really appreciate you, uh, you interviewing us and... Yeah. And you you got to be celebrating the first win as well with uh, Luton. No, oh my god. Yeah. Did you go to it? No, I didn't. Um I was working, I think. 
Fest or something, yeah. And the tickets are selling out quicker than ever, so it's really hard to get a ticket now. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. when we get our new ground, then there's more seats and stuff, but yeah, it's really hard. Yeah. Well, yeah. Congrats on that. Two of our players were in the team of the week as well, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Perhaps we'll start getting respected instead of completely dissed every week. Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah. Um, anyway, would you like to remind everyone where they can get your books from? And where I'm on football now, so my eyes glazed. <laughs> it was <football> talk. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, tell us, uh, tell everyone where they can find your books and where they can find out more about you if they would like to. Go on, Joe. Well, the book is on Amazon on Kindle at the moment, um, due to be a paperback in two weeks, hopefully in Audible several weeks after that. And the you can find us at he says she says dot net. Yeah, and obviously you can follow us on Facebook, Gemma Metcalf Arthur, Joe Corley Arthur. We're on we are on Twitter as well and Instagram and sort of things like that, aren't we? Yeah, we've got quite a few of the... Uh, I, TikTok. I try a bit of TikTok in now and again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watch it. I don't participate too much. <laughs> Tried it a few times. Like... Yeah, it's very time-consuming and very distracting. Great procrastination, I found. Yeah. yeah. Well, brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Dan. Happy nice. <laughs>